There's a cold bug going around. It's probably a gift I brought back from Thailand. And I'm sh sorry that I shared it with you. <laughs> and on top of that, we've got the Santa Anas, where, which can be very irritating to the, the membranes of the body, all the ionized air going around. So it may be good to stop and think about meditating while you're sick. All too many people I know going through an illness afterwards tell me, I just couldn't meditate. And it, actually, it's when you're sick that you really need to meditate, because at the very least you've got to keep your mind in good shape. For its own sake, and also for the sake of the, your physical health as well. If you're all worked up around the illness, it can often make it worse. So it's good to keep your mind calm and focused as best you can. Sometimes you have the problem of not being very alert, either because of the illness itself or because of the medicine. But it's still possible to meditate and to get benefits from the meditation, even when you're not feeling well physically. There's a story in the canon about the Buddha suffering from an injury to his foot. Mara came up and taunted him as he was lying there. And so, are you moping? Are you sad? And the Buddha said, no. I'm developing goodwill for all beings. That's a good exercise. So you're not concentrating on your own pain or concentrating on the limitations that the illness is placing on you. Let your awareness ex expand out so it's not confined just to the body. May all beings be happy. May all beings be free from stress and pain, however you want to express that thought to yourself. And holding that larger frame of reference in mind is often very healing to the mind, calming for the body. And then try to work with the breath. It's good if one part of the body is especially ill not to focus on that part immediately. If it's a pain in some part of the body, find a part that's not pained. Focus your attention there. And think of the breath flowing freely in that part of the body. And then as that little beachhead gets established, then you can spread it to other parts of the body and finally into the pained part. Think of the breath energy flowing all around, because all too often we tighten up around pain. It just makes it worse. So think of the breath energy flowing well. If you've got congestion in your nose or in your ears, think of the breath energy coming in and out every part of the body. And that eases the breathing process. It's breath energy coming into the pores all over the skin. And you may find that Focusing on one part of the body in particular is very helpful. If you have a headache, sometimes it's good to focus down around the base of the spine. Stomach ache, focus on the knees. In other words, give the mind something good to preoccupy itself with, so it's not focusing on the pain or focusing on how frustrated you are with the illness and allow the breath to actually help with the healing process. Now, a lot of this is going to be very individual. You know, the seven steps in a John Lee's method two were formulated when he was recovering from a heart attack. And I've talked to people who've had heart disease, and they said, you know, focus on getting the breath energy in the back of the neck and going down the spine, down the shoulders. It's a very direct way of dealing with some of the problems that come up when you have heart disease. But if you have a different disease, we'll try to figure out where the body needs energy and which direction it should flow. Because when you breathe in, the energy can flow up, it can flow down. It can flow in from all directions to a 
center that runs down like a string through the body, in and out in all directions. So play with the breath energy. Do everything you can to keep the mind in a good mood. You know, the Buddha advises you that even when you're dying to keep the mind in a good mood. So illness gives you good preparation. If you're worried about things you're not getting done or pleasures you're not able to indulge in, just put those thoughts aside. Those aren't going to be helpful at all. They're weighing you down. Basically do what you can. And if you've, you're too groggy to be really well focused, again, go back to those thoughts of goodwill for everybody. They're safe thoughts to keep in mind. John Mahabu had a student one time, a woman who was dying of cancer. And she came and stayed with him for three months to meditate. And as he pointed out to her, the main concern that he had was not so much using the meditation to cure the cancer that she had, but to make sure that her mind was in good shape. And she also brought a friend, a retired doctor, along with her. After the three, three months, she went home, and a couple months later she died. And the retired doctor decided that she had some free time. She wanted to transcribe all the tapes. And she was suffering from some limitations herself. She was getting old. But she wanted to see how much she could do, and she actually ended up doing 70, 80 talk transcriptions. And she wrote in her note that went along with the book that was ultimately printed from these things, that she really wanted to see how much goodness she could get out of what she had, even with the limitations she had as she was getting older, her sight, her eyesight wasn't all that good. So think of what good things you can think about, what skillful things you can think about, even in your limited state when you're sick. And simply because you can't sit up in the meditation position doesn't mean you can't meditate. You can meditate lying down. You just have to be extra careful that you don't fall asleep too easily. One trick I found that helps is when you're lying on your side, put one foot on top of the other and make sure that it doesn't slip off. Just that extra amount of vigilance helps keep you awake. And if you do slip off to sleep, I hope it's a healing sleep, but then when you wake up, go, come right back to the breath. In other words, these are things you can still do, even in, given the limitations of whatever the illness has placed on you. So don't fall for that idea that, well, I'm sick right now, and my mindfulness isn't all that good, and my alertness isn't all that good, and so I just shouldn't meditate. Do the best, do the best you can. If you have trouble focusing anywhere in the body, think of the space around the body. And again, spread your awareness out so it's not confined just to your body right here. Think of the human condition as a whole. Everybody has to get sick at one time or another. And so we're all in this together. It's like a card game. All the different cards get passed out in the course of the card game. It's just which hand do you have right now? It's not going to be the hand you have the next time around or the next time around, but you play with the hand you've got. Remember the attitude of that old woman? She said, I don't know how much I can do, but I'm going to try my best. To be as mindful, to be as alert. And keep the mind on skillful topics. It'll be good for the body, but even more importantly, it's going to be good for your mind. You don't want your mind to get dragged down by the state of the body. 
because after all we're meditating, to find something that is not affected by the aging or the illness or the death of the body even. The illness gives you a good chance to practice that. To see that even with physical limitations, the mind can still train itself. And still find places where, in the body where it can develop a sense of well-being, and use that to sen develop a sense of well-being in the mind. Because it's the strength of mind that you're going to need. The strength of the body is inevitably going to wane away, it has its ups and downs. And of course the condition of the body is going to have an effect on the brain. But there's a part of the mind that's not affected by these things. And that's where you want to find. And you find it by not giving in easily to limitations. Learning to work around the ones that you can't change. And then use the stillness of the mind, use the free flowingness of the breath. to make changes for the better.